Hello everyone, we are the Paradox, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to make material for the punk outfit, adding some details on it on Sprush, and finally render it at Arnold. If you want to learn how to make the punk outfit on the Marvelous Designer, we uploaded a video of how to make it on our channel, you can also see that. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to it and hit the notification button, so you do not miss our future videos. Well, let's not waste any more time and go to it. To make the material, we must first export the clothes from Marvelous Designer, but before that, it needs a series of preparations. These changes cause us to have no problem when outputting and importing in Brush and Substance Painter. Adjusting the UV is the most important thing we can do. We apply the material on the UV of the garment, so we need the output of our work to be unwrap. We can use unwrap specialized software to do this, but I'm doing it here in Marvelous Designer, because I don't want to complicate things too much. To do this, at the top, change the toolbar to UV Editor to enter the unwrap toolbar. So far, no automatic unwrap tool has been added to this version of Marvelous Designer, so we have to manually place each of the clusters in UV. There are several things to consider. If the symmetrical paste is used when making clothes, it is necessary that when making UV bonded clusters, it should be completely mirror. Otherwise, when making normal material, the fabric in that series of parts is made in the opposite direction. You can set the unwrap type based on UDIM, and set the whole clusters on two or more UV screens. In this case, each of the clusters will be placed in a larger size, and the texture will be placed on it with higher quality. The larger the clusters, the more UV space they take up, and the higher the quality of the material. Try to adjust the clusters, so that they are as large as possible in UV. If it is necessary to have several clusters of higher quality separately, we should increase the size of these clusters, and it is better to choose for parts that do not need high quality, and reduce the size of their clusters, there should be more space for the rest of the clusters. This method optimizes the system, and higher quality textures when making materials. When making UV, care must be taken that the clusters do not cross the UV boundary line, and that the clusters do not overlap. The next step is to prepare the model topology. The current topology of the model is triangular. The correct topology for other software is quadrilateral, and for the model to be standard, it is better to make the model topology quadrilateral. In the first case, you can select the model and select the quadrangulate option, in the 3D garment section, in the edit and context menu. This command allows the irregular topology to become quadrilateral. But in this case, we still see some triangular topologies, and if the model topology is not very important, this tool can be used. In the next mode, you can select all and right-click on the model in the 3D bar, to select the remesh option. 
This tool regularly converts clusters into quadrilaterals, and is a good choice for people for whom the model topology is very important. But in this case, the corners and edges of each piece of fabric may not be quadrangular, in which case they can be adjusted manually, and finally, get a complete and excellent topology. After finishing the process, it is better to simulate again, and finally, the model is ready to output. Save the output as OBJ without characters. Select the single object mode, and choose one of the three modes, thin weld, thin unweld, and thick, based on our needs. Thick mode in thick parts, its UV is not defined. So in the case of thick output, it is better to define UV thickness separately, for other parts in that software. UV is applied to this output, but it is not set as UDIM, and we need to identify each of the UVs, and define it as a poly group, so that we can create material on each of the UVs separately. We import the output model into Sprush. We need to define a polygroup for each UV. To do this, in the polygroup section, select the UV group option. We increase the model details. If the edges and corners of the model get messy, you can use crease so that the edges do not get messy. These problems do not occur, if we take the output as a thin weld. Otherwise, we must activate the crease when increasing the detail. Now we can apply changes to each of the polygroups manually and with different brushes, and by increasing its details, we can reach a high poly model. We will use the high poly model later in baking. Thank you. 
After making the changes, we output the integrated low poly model as FBX. And then for the output of the high poly model, we have to output each of the poly groups separately. We have to select the split group option, and output each of the subtools as FBX. Now it's time to start materializing. Open the substance painter and enter the low poly model. If we have a model without thickness, it is better to change the type of shader, so that the normals appear on both sides of our screen. Now we see in which of the poly groups we specified, it is applied as a texture list. Now it is time to bake the high poly model on the low poly model. In the baking section, we define the high poly model of the selected section, and we bake the normal, AO, curvature, etc. maps as needed. Pay attention to the size of the bake maps, and not all of them need to be in their largest size.
After we bake all the parts, we start making materials by creating layers. We start by determining a general color for the clothes, and for more details, we can add the mask and generators, as well as the procedures, and combine them using blending modes, to achieve the desired result in producing the original color. The same process can be done for other sections, for example, for fabric details and protrusions in its layer, activate height and add a special texture, to produce the desired material. And we can make big changes in them, by using level and filters. The warp filter is used to create disorder and imbalance in the environment. This filter can be used, so that the material is not homogeneous. Other filters such as blur, sharpness, bevel, etc. can also be used and by combining these, we can achieve the desired material. To add clearer noises and irregularities in the material, and add fine and messy details, it is better to use noise textures or grunge and adjust them manually. There is another type of this detail called the smart mask, which cleverly creates a series of details and irregularities based on bake maps. Using these items is very useful in some situations, but it is not good to overdo it. Using generators is also very useful. Generators such as dirt and fiber, automatic stitches, and UV borders are very useful, and are used in many projects. You can also use the smart materials in the software itself, and change it to your desired material by turning off and on the layers, and changing them. Ordinary materials also exist, which are widely used in the construction of the basic material base, and in some cases, simple materials are used, and gradually become a professional material through a process. After finishing the materialization, you can add sewing lines on your fabric, with generators such as auto stitch. You can also add custom layers by adding a paint layer manually, and with different brushes on the fabric.
Now the material is finished, and the next step is to output the textures. Because we do the rendering process in Arnold, we set the template to Arnold, and if we needed opacity or illumination maps, we had to add it manually to the outputs, and finally output the textures. We enter Maya and enter the low poly model into the studio. And after placing the camera and adjusting the lights, we start importing textures, and in the hyper shader, by creating an eye standard surface, we start connecting textures to each of our parts. Different nodes may be used, including BUMP2D, Displacement Shader, Divide. Then we attribute the made material to the model. We start testing the renderings, and in case of any problem in the light or material, we go to the relevant section, and correct it to reach the desired light or material.
Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this video was helpful to you and could have added something to your information. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to it so that you do not miss our future videos. If you like this video, please like it, it will help us a lot. If you have any questions, you can say them in the comments section. So I will see you in future videos.